We're going to do a few problems where we have to find missing angles in rectangles. Let me quickly show you the problems we'll be doing so you can try them on your own and just see what's to come for the rest of the video. For these first few problems, we just want to find the missing angle X or Y or in this case A. And the next one, for this one, we're going to find all of the missing angles. So we're given the measure of one angle and we're gonna find all of the others. And then we'll do a similar thing for the last exercise, but we're given an angle in a different spot. And again, we'll find all of the missing angles. So those are the problems we'll be doing. Give them a try yourself. The key fact to remember is that the four angles of a rectangle are 90 degree angles. So let's get into it. Here we have a diagonal of the rectangle that's cutting this angle in two pieces. One piece is 42 degrees and the other piece is X and we want to find X. Again, remember every angle of a rectangle, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle, Angle, they're all right angles. They all have a measure of 90 degrees. In this case, these two smaller angles are called complementary because together they form a right angle. In other words, we have that X plus that angle of 42 degrees, they have to total up to 90 degrees since this whole angle has a measure of 90 degrees. Since they have to add to 90 degrees, we can subtract 42 from both sides in order to solve for x. So on the left side, the 42 will cancel out with the minus 42 and we'll be left with x like we want. On the right side, 90 minus 42, that's going to be 48. And that's the answer, x equals 48, or to be a bit more particular, x is 48 degrees. All right, on to problem number two. This is exactly the same type of problem, so give it a try yourself before watching the solution. Again, this whole angle is an angle of a rectangle, so it has a measure of 90 degrees. It's cut into two smaller angles. Notice this time it's not being cut by a diagonal, but that doesn't change the situation. The 90 degree angle of the rectangle has been cut into two pieces, this 68 degree angle and this angle with a measure of Y, which is what we want to solve for. Again, since these two angles together form a right angle, they're called complementary. Complementary angles add to 90 degrees, so we have that y plus 68 is equal to 90. Subtract 68 from both sides in order to solve for y. We'll have on the left, 68s will cancel out. We'll just have that y is equal to 90 minus 68, which is 22 degrees. Notice that I don't bother writing the degrees unit when I'm working with the equation, just because it takes up too much space. It looks kind of clunky. We know that we're working with degrees, so I just like to add it on to the final answer. Your teacher may not care if you use the degrees symbol at all, or maybe they'll demand that you use it through all of your work, but I don't think it's that important. You just wanna keep in mind what we're actually doing. We're solving for the measure of an angle in degrees. On to the next problem. Here again, we have a very similar problem, so give it a try yourself. This is an angle of a rectangle, so it has a measure of 90 degrees, but in this case, it's been cut up into three smaller angles instead of just two smaller angles. Again, since these three angles make up an angle of a rectangle, they have to add to 90 degrees, although in this case, we don't call them complementary. Only a pair of angles that add to 90 degrees are complementary. Here we have three angles, so they add to 90 degrees, but we don't have a special name for them. But we're trying to solve for the missing angle A, and the process is very similar. We have that 23 plus A plus 31, the sum of these three measures, has to equal the angle measure of the rectangle, 90 degrees. Now, before subtracting anything from both sides of this equation, we could add the 23 and 31 together. Order of addition doesn't matter, so we can just combine those two things. 23 plus 31 is 54. So we have that A plus 54 is equal to 90. And then just like we've been doing, subtract 54 from both sides of the equation. 
On the left side, 54 and minus 54 cancel out, so we're left with A as desired. On the right, we have 90 minus 54, which is 36 degrees. So that's our answer. And if you're ever a little unsure about your answer, it's always good practice to plug it back in to your original equation and see if it makes it true. In this case, we'd have 23 plus 36 plus 31, which should equal 90. If we add up the tens units, we have 20 plus 30 is 50, plus another 30 is 80. And then if we add up the ones places, we have 83, plus six is 89, plus one is 90. So that checks out, our answer is right. All right, two more problems to go. Now we have both diagonals of our rectangle, and we're told that they intersect at an angle of 101 degrees. We want to find the measures of all the missing angles. The first thing to notice is that these are vertical angles, and so they are congruent. So this angle has the same measure as the angle over here, sort of on the opposite side. So this angle has a measure of 101 degrees because they are vertical angles. Then how about this little angle here? Well, notice that this angle and this angle, they form a line. They are supplementary angles, which means they add to 180 degrees. So if we call this angle X, since it's supplementary with the angle that has a measure of 101 degrees, we would have that X plus 101 is equal to 180. Together they form a straight angle, a line. Subtract 101 from both sides and then we'll have that X is equal to 79 degrees. And then again, by vertical angles, this angle on the other side has that same measure, 79 degrees. All right, now let's look at these two angles over here at the base of this triangle. We have to remember that the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. So this piece here is congruent to this piece here. That means this is an isosceles triangle, a triangle with a pair of congruent sides. In an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the congruent sides are also congruent. So these two angles are congruent. That's a result of the isosceles triangle theorem, and I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that theorem if you wanna see why it's true. So if we say this angle here has a measure of y, then so does this other angle. Now, what do we know about the total angle sum of a triangle? Well, the three angles of a triangle have to add to 180 degrees. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that as well. Since these three angles have to add up to 180 degrees, we can set up an equation. We have two angles with the measure of y, so y plus y plus this third angle, 101, has to equal 180, the angle sum of a triangle. Then we can combine the y's, y plus y, that's two y's. So we have that two y plus 101 is equal to 180. Then subtract 101 from both sides of the equation. That gives us that 2y is equal to 79. Then divide both sides by 2, and we have that y is equal to 39.5 degrees. So we can zoom on in and replace our y's with 39.5 degrees. The logic we applied to solve for those angles would apply the same way to this triangle up here. In fact, they are congruent triangles, so these two angles will also have that same measure, 39.5. Another way to see that is that the opposite sides of a rectangle are parallel to each other. So with this diagonal, what we've actually got here are alternate interior angles. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal like this, the alternate interior angles are congruent. Now only four angles remain for us to solve. We can solve for these purple angles in the same way we solved our previous problems. The purple angle and the blue angle are complementary. They make up an angle of a rectangle which has a measure of 90 degrees. 
So if we call this purple angle, let's say A, we have that A plus 39.5 is equal to 90. Again, these two angles together make up a right angle. Then we can just subtract 39.5 from both sides in order to solve for A. That will give us that A is equal to 50.5 degrees. And so we can zoom back into that A and replace it with 50.5 degrees. And the logic that we just used to solve for that angle would also apply to this angle and this angle and this angle. They all have the same measure. And that's how we can solve for all of the angles in a rectangle when we're given just one. Here is our last problem. In the interest of time, I'm not going to walk you through this step by step. It's very similar to the one we just did. So give it a try yourself. To get you started, we already know that this angle is 52 degrees. But remember, the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. So this piece here is congruent to this piece here. So that means this is an isosceles triangle, just like this one, which we saw in our previous example. That means this angle up here has to have the same measure as this one. And since these two triangles are congruent, we also know that these two angles have the same measure. So with that head start, try solving for all of the missing angles. I'll fill in the answers in three, two, one, and there are the answers. So let me know how it went down in the comments, and I hope this video was helpful. Much for me. There's nothing here to hold on to. Do I want to? You turn into everything. Keep tomorrow on your wings. But everyone else just looks at you.